Alrighty, we are on the second day of our third week of Unit 1. We are working with inverse functions again, and today what we're going to be doing called verifying inverse functions, which basically is proving if they are or aren't. For your warm-up, we're going to practice our compositions, okay? So practicing our compositions. So pause now to do your warm-up. For our first composition, we have h of g of x, so that means my furthest out outside function is my h, so I will have 3 blank plus 5, so that's my h function, okay? And then inside the blank, I will use my g, my g is negative 2x squared plus 1. If you remember from here, since it is just going to be some mathematical operation, so from here we will be saying distribute is negative 6x squared plus 3, bring down the plus 5, and combine like terms. Right? And that is the entire thing for number 1. For number two, it's asking for compositions with evaluation, so we're going to do it twice, okay? For the first one, it has f of g of two, okay? So we're gonna do our f on the outside as two blank plus four. And then inside of that, we're gonna put g, and g is a fraction, but don't panic. Just put them inside. And inside that blank, we're going to put the 2, okay? Order of operations tells us to do the numerator first. I know it's tempting to deal with the denominator, but numerator first. So we're going to leave our outsides alone, 2 blank plus 4, okay? So when we do that, okay? I'm going to have 2 minus 4, which is negative 2 over 2. What is negative 2 divided by 2? So it would be 2 blank negative 1 plus 4. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus 4, which is 2. Okay. So we ended up with what we plugged in. Interesting. All right. Then if we go over here, okay, and let's say we're doing g first, we're going to do g of f of 1, so g comes first. My g is blank minus 4 over 2. I'm going to put f in the blank, so f is 2 blank plus 4. Okay, and again what we're putting in that blank is in fact a number, a 1 there. This one in some ways is easier than the other one, okay? So we're going to deal with our inside parentheses first. So 2 times 1 is 2, so I have 2 plus 4 in there. So 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 minus 4 is 2. I end up with 2 over 2, which is 1. Did you notice what we got on these is when I plugged it in, I got the same thing I plugged in out, okay? That might be if you noticed, these are inverses. Reviewing from yesterday, if I have f of x, I'm trying to find my inverse. So I reiterate, this is review from yesterday. First thing I do is switch my x, my f of x to, sorry, brain fart to y equals to x plus 4. Switch my x and y. And then solve. So I subtract 4. So I get x minus 4 equals to y. And divide the 2. And oh my goodness, my f inverse function is x minus 4 over 2, which is the same thing as g. So this is a special property of inverse functions that we'll be using today. Okay, so make sure you check out your warm-up. Make sure you understand how to compose. Okay, we're going to go on to notes now. Okay, make
make sure you write these down very carefully. Okay. Verify inverses functions, and that's what your instructions will say in your test. Verify the inverse. Okay. To verify, you find f of g of x or g of f of x. So that's our composition. If they are inverses, okay, the answer should be yes. So if the answer is x, yes, it's an inverse. So if you get something other than x, okay, if you get something other than x, they are not inverses. You have to explain why. And the math is the explaining of the why, really. Okay? To do this, we just have to compose our functions. It doesn't really matter what order you compose the functions. You can do f on the outside and then g, or g on the outside and then f. Do whichever way you think makes the most sense. Okay? I'm going to start by looking at this first one, which we're going to try having f outside of g. Okay? So the first thing we have to do is set it up. Okay? f is our two blank plus three and our g is x minus three over two so everyone good with the composition there now the key here is we're going to cancel things out in order to get full credit for showing this method you must show each canceling step the first thing i notice to cancel okay and you don't have really a choice here if i'm multiplying by two and I have a fraction with two. Aren't those opposite actions? Yes. So these cancel out. Okay. Which leaves me with my x minus three plus three. Okay. Well, what cancels next? Hmm. Let's think. Minus three and plus three? Yeah. They're gone. So all that's left at the very end is my plain x, which proves that yes, they are inverses, okay? So you write yes, okay? Again, it's not going to matter if you do it in the opposite direction, okay? So if I do it where I do g first, because I maybe don't want to have a fraction inside my parentheses, right? And I have blank, sorry, blank minus three over two, and I plug in, 2x plus 3. The main thing that will change here is the order in which it cancels. Working in our numerator first, okay, you'll notice that the plus 3 and the minus 3 cancel first. So that leaves me my 2x over 2, okay, which is when you see, oh, my 2's canceled. And again, I have an x. The answer is still yes. Okay. So it doesn't matter what order you do it, if you do f first or g first, the key is they have to cancel out completely. And in order to get full credit, you have to show each step canceling. You can't just like, well, it canceled and move forward. Show me. All right, let's do a slightly uglier one, okay? Ugly, but not hard. All right, so this one, I'm going to do f first, okay? Again, it doesn't matter just for my example and my habit, okay? I tend to do things in this order, okay? So I'm going to do f of g of x. So my outside is my f. So I'm writing everything very carefully. And this is difficult because you're going to have a double parentheses going on here, right? So something plus 2 cubed minus 3. I hope that makes sense, okay? So I'm just replacing my x with my red parentheses, and inside my red parentheses I'm going to put g. It's a little hard for me to write this small, but cube root x plus 3, not of the root, minus 2. Okay? So that's my entire g inside my entire f. And working inside the parentheses as close as possible, first thing I'm noticing the cube can't do anything yet because we got these twos hanging out. But lucky for us, negative two and positive two right next to each other do in fact cancel. So my next line would look like parentheses, Q 
cube minus 3, and inside that parentheses, I have cube root x plus 3. And as we've talked about, the opposite of cube root is cubing. So my cube root and my cubing are canceled, leaving x plus 3 and minus 3. And we know 3 minus 3 is going to cancel out to nada. So I get plain x. So yes. Yes, it is an inverse. I am done. Okay? And then we have example three over here, chilling. And I already know looking at it, it's going to cause a problem. And I'll point out why in a second. But we're going to try and do it again. So we're going to have, change color, make it black. Okay, I'm going to do f of g again. That's our composition. Okay, so it's two blank cubed minus one. That's my f, my top function. I tend to just work from top to bottom, but you don't have to. And I plug in g. And now we stare at it for a while. Well, the twos look similar to each other, but they're not going to cancel because obviously they're multiplying and, and everything's trapped inside my black cube so it's not like I can add this one to this negative one because it's trapped. So does anything actually cancel? Nothing cancels. So if nothing cancels, okay, are they inverses? No, they're not inverses. Okay. And I had some hints early on that these were not going to be inverses. The first thing I'm seeing is that they're both cubed functions, okay? If they're both cubed, okay, okay, it's not reversed to a cube root, okay? So if one of them's cubed, the other one has to be a cube root or else they're not going to undo each other. Okay, the other thing is if I have a multiplying by 2, like I have up there, okay, the multiplying by 2, that means if I have a multiplying by 2 and one of them, I should have a divide. Ooh, I could spell divide correct, that'd be helpful. Divide by 2 in the other one. But I don't. So therefore, I know already, look, O and A, so that's a plus 2, that I'm not going to have inverses. All right? So use that gut instinct, but be careful. All right, all you have to do is work through 15 of these. And yes, when you do notice that they do not have opposite actions, okay, point out the opposite actions and say not inverses. They're very, very fast. All right. One thing I do have, I'll give you a hint on the worksheet. If I can find it fast enough, not to drive all crazy. So bonus for watching all the way through the YouTube video, right, is I'm going to tell you how many of them are not inverses. Okay. All right. I believe six of them are not inverses. So six are not inverses. Nine are. All right. Good luck. Do your best. Let me know if you need any help.